evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Thursday, September 26th at midnight Mountain Time 2019. Take a look at the GFS models. <sighs> Heavy snow moving into the region as we enter fall. Not winter, fall. And the snows will come. Keep calm. It is boom time. Extreme early fall pattern to keep south and east searing in the record heat because you live in a global warming world. This is what they need to grab onto. They're searing record heat in October, which is normal. And in fact, it's only possible record highs. There is no record. Anyway, just normal high temperatures in October. But what is a record? Historic September blizzard, bitter cold to wall up the northern Rockies this weekend. Up to 40 inches of snow is possible in some mountain ranges. I've seen numbers at 52, but we're going to 40 inches in Montana. Blizzard conditions will be possible for a time due to howling winds. They could gust up to 40 miles per hour. Just days after summer ends. Temperatures will drop 25 to 30 degrees in the northwest. And possible September snowfall could set a Spokane record. Many people living in Spokane said seeing white on the ground before the leaves change colors is quite unexpected. Monday marked the official start of fall, but snow already trying to sneak in early. A frost is expected to arrive in Spokane on Saturday. And a chance of rain in the forecast could bring snow by Sunday morning. Whew, right after Saturday, heavy snow and high winds this weekend in Montana. Heads up. That's the, the record-breaking snowstorm is likely in Montana. And it's coming out from multiple sources. It has been issued for the Glacier region and the Rocky Mountain Front for Friday evening through Sunday, which will be your fun day if you're a sledder or a shredder. The watch area is likely to expand as the storm gets closer to include much more of the state, which is your fate. So just because where you live is not in the winter storm watch, that doesn't mean it won't snow. A high wind watch has been issued for much of central Montana for Thursday. A big storm is coming. This storm will likely produce heavy wet snow for much of the big sky before the weekend is out. The first week of fall. Where's Al Gore when you need him? Travel will likely become extremely difficult in a slushy accumulation on the road and difficult visibility because of heavy snow and wind. Some roads may become impassable. Heavy snow and wind could also create power outages as the weight of the snow on trees with leaves could bring trees and thus power lines down. How does that sound? Weekend blizzard may be a September benchmark. Snowstorm in Montana, dumping over a foot of snow in many areas that don't even know what that means. Well, yeah, they do. Just not in the first week of autumn. Where's Greta when you need her? We'll get to that. Here's your models. <whistles> Holy macaroni. I need a smoke moment. So what we're looking at Friday through your Saturday, through your Sunday. <laughs> and that will be your fun day. Heads up, Montana. Regions there could see up to 48 inches of snow in the high mountains. Wyoming, Utah. Washington, Oregon, Nevada, the Sierras, Utah. I guess they were left out. They were left out from that article, which could have been a short article, but it just left them out. And then it's boom time for Canada. I hope you harvest your crops. Because by the first week, maybe in the third day of October, oh, yeah, October 1st. Come on.
You got to get him in. Major outbreak of polar air to hit Europe. UK on course for minus 5C by September. Late September. It is September. Holy shit, are these models? Oh my God. Where's Greta? Earliest snow in decades in Greta, Sweden. Autumn arriving sooner in Europe. Cooling August trends and stunningly early snows in Europe contradict global catastrophic warming claims. Recently, we heard reports of the earliest snowfall in Greta Thunberg, Sweden in 20 years and stunning snowfall in Norway. Du hast ein kleines Schneewutzen. Nein! Du hast ein Glossischlung. I don't even know what I said, but it means I'm well equipped. Nine million cubic feet of ice may soon collapse in the Alps. Now, this is where my geologic background comes into play. Do you see this shelf up here in this hanging valley? Now, let's first describe a hanging valley. This is a valley that is truncated from major glaciation years of yore. Here's another hanging valley. Where you see a glacier builds and then it has to fall down here and kill everyone below. Another hanging valley, another big chunk of ice. About to shear because you can clearly see it has separated and it's going to fall. This is because snow falls, glaciers move forward, and calving events occur. These calving events could be catastrophic like the 9 million cubic feet of ice seen here, which is about to fall off the cliff. Bounce down here and kill everyone below. The only problem is this gizmodo blames this on global warming. Oh, the only way you can get this is if you have record snows pushing this glacier down the hanging valley. And you can see the picture here they're showing you is from the end of the summer, which is the warmest time of year. And it looks really warm here in the Alps. God damn, I hate a scam. That's why I take the tram. Now, a glacier is on the verge of collapsing in the northwestern Italian Alps. This is yet another reminder of why global leaders need to take action to stop climate change now. Because this climate change includes record snow and glaciers calving. I mean, it's unclaving. Did I say that right? Scientists monitoring the Plan Pincho Glacier on the Grandes Jurassic Mountain sounded the alarm about the glacier Wednesday. Ah, yes. The future doesn't have to be so dark. Cutting greenhouse gases emissions can reduce the amount of glacier death. Glacier death? Is that even a thing? And if we stop at least some glaciers from melting... There may be some hope for those who live along the coast as well as the mountains. Well, Yesenia Funes, you fraud with purple hair. <laughs> you should probably use Nair and take that off of your scalp. Because the only way glaciers could be this in thick in a hanging valley is because of record snowfall. Not because of anything melting. And calving of glaciers is because they're moving down slope and they have to jump, dump Trump before they get another dump of snow. Ho, ho, ho. Now let's talk about <laughs> Greta Thunberg's global warming world. When she gets back home from this climate summit, oh my God, she's going to be like, Mommy, Mommy, why is it snowing? I thought it was going to be going to burn up. What the fuck is, why is it snowing? Why is it snowing? You said my future was going to burn up and now I'm going to freeze my ass off. I thought it was going to burn up. Maybe not. Whatever. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Whew. Did I go too far there? I bet you we're going to be demonetized and banned from the internet. 
But just look at the models. Poor Greta. She's going to be buried in the global warming goodness. The Alps as well. That we're claiming that they were going to, they're melting. There's going to be like a hundred, there's going to be meters of ice and snow falling as the first week of autumn begins. My prediction. I did it. The Alps will record all-time records. We're talking fetometers. These are new uh, terms. Deca fetometers of snow in the Alps. We're going to see uh, earthquakes causing avalanche throughout the European region. A region that wishes they had Legionnaire's disease because the catastrophe will be tenfold this winter, which will be like better than a splinter. Anyway, seismic update. No quakes of note. We have some boomers here in Indonesia. 6.5 kicking off in Krakens. That When did that happen? I must have missed that one. What's going on? Let's check out this, the uh, tsunami warning. I clicked it. Apparently we have bandwidth issues. Typical. Hidden world of undersea volcanoes and lava flows discovered off the Italian coast. Well, I'm mostly Italian, so. The coast with the most volcanic complex was found beneath the Tyranian Sea off the Italian coast of Calabria. Probably not. I just love that word. Hidden beneath the waves of the Tyrrhenian Sea near southwestern Italy lies a newfound volcanic mosaic. There's tiles involved. Dotted with geothermal chimneys and flat top seamounts. Oh, shit. sounds awesome. Now, this complex is new to both science and the planet. <whistles> Geologically speaking, it's only about 780,000 years old. Same time, you, well, yeah, Yellowstone went off then. Holy shit, could be related. Is anybody's guess? Here we are, no tsunami warning and advisory from the 6.5. We're all going to stay alive. Seismic update. No quakes of note, nor tsunamis. But we have a cacophony of quakes that are going off everywhere, as they usually do. <laughs> but I poo-poo. Do you smell it? Worldwide Volcano News Update. Oh, it is getting this time of year. Reventador. Kiss. My ASO Volcano Volcanic Ash Advisory. Nevados de Chilan puffing. Sabin Kaya has been blowing its arse off 27, 28, 29,000 feet almost a half a dozen times in the last 24 hours. Hours of powers, as well as Popo to 22, 23. Puffing, puffing, passing. Oh, I wish I lived there. I could watch it, I could film it. Now, is the theory of Earth's climate in the last 15 million years wrong? Yes. Rutgers led study cast doubts on the Himalayan rock weathering hypothesis. <clears throat> now, a key theory that attributes the climate evolution of the Earth to the breakdown of Himalayan rocks may not explain the cooling over the past 15 million years, according to a Rutgers led study, which is getting very muddy in the climate change world. The study in the Journal of Nature Geoscience, there it is, could shed more light on the causes of long-term climate change. It centers on the long-term cooling that occurred before the recent global warming tied to greenhouse gas emission from bullshit alarmists at the IPCC. <laughs> now, the findings, I'm going to do this in an accent because it sounds much better. The findings of our study, if substantiated, 
raise more questions than they answered, said senior author Yasir Rosenthal, who's a Jewish Muslim, apparently. A distinguished professor in the Department of Marine and Coastal Sciences in the School of Environmental and Biological Sciences at the Rutgers University of New Brunswick. Holy shit, he's from fucking New Jersey, for Christ's sake. If the cooling is not due to enhanced Himalayan rock weathering, then what processes have been overlooked? Well, the books have been cooked by the IPCC and every other in the paleoclimatology world is uh, basically grasping for straws. Now, for decades, the leading hypothesis has been the collision of the Indian and Asian continents. An uplifting of the Himalayas brought fresh rocks to the Earth's surfaces, and that causes weathering and erosion of those rocks, making them more vulnerable to weathering, uh, because the higher the mountains are, the faster they weather. It's just fact. And therefore, captured and stored carbon dioxide, a key greenhouse gas. But this hypothesis remains unconfirmed. Now let's just scroll down to the bottom because it's not that long of an article. Just basically not a short article. <coughs> the scientists surprisingly found that algae called... Oh, let's go up here. If weathering increases, then the accumulation of calcium carbonate in the deep sea should increase. But after studying dozens of deep sea sediment cores through an international ocean drilling program, yeah, that's highlighted. SI found that calcium carbonate in shells decreased significantly over 15 million years, which suggests that rock weathering may not be responsible for the long term cooling. Hmm, who are they fooling? Scientists surprisingly also found that algae called coccolithophores adapted to the carbon dioxide decline over 15 million years. Hmm. Probably due to cosmic rays. Reducing their production of calcium carbonate. This reduction apparently was not taken into account in previous studies. Like all the other shit from the IPCC. Many scientists believe that ocean acidification from high carbon dioxide levels will reduce calcium carbonate and algae. And guess what? They're wrong! The study suggests the exact opposite occurred over the last 15 million years, which we've been reporting on for the last two years here on the channel, that everything that the mainstream reports on is the exact opposite of the truth. And there you have it. Reduced continental weathering and marine calcification linked to late ne neogene decline in atmospheric CO2. The exact opposite of what these pricks are claiming. Wrong again from the pricks. 50 years of failed eco-apocalyptic predictions. And this article is picking up Tony Heller like nine. And that means like, like whoa. Like, they're picking him up without putting him down. Because Tony Heller is the bomb. He's the bomb biggity. He's the diggity daggity of the schmaggity. He won't come on the show, but Santa goes ho, ho, ho. And anything is possible. I'm going to bribe Tim Ball to get him on. Maybe he needs a cocktail. Reevaluating the role of solar variability on northern hemisphere temperature trends since the 19th century. Well, debate over what influence, if any, <laughs> solar variability has on surface air temperature trends since the 19th century is almost like saying, when the sun rises, does the temperature get warm? But I digress. This paper is to pick it up and put it down for all of you people. Reevaluating the role of solar variability on the northern hemisphere temperature trend since the 19th century will point out everything that we put down. Dalton minimum, record highs in the 40s and 50s, Maunder minimum, and thus and such, and the graphs 
to make you believe in what we're telling you. Keep calm. I need to move on. 20 minutes, 17 seconds in. And the grand solar minimum stole your dreams, Greta. Not carbon. And when you go back to Sweden and you find it snowing outside in the first week of autumn, please question the powers that be. Now, let's talk about sustainability and the new world order that we're going to live in globalism. It's awesome. It's so awesome. Check this out. It's so sustainable. I just heard that, like, we're going to change to, like, totally, like, wind farms and shit. And check this out. In Casper, Wyoming, man, the regional landfill is now burying turbine blades. Yeah, those 800-foot turbine blades that are totally sustainable. It's awesome. More than 900 blades will be brought to the landfill in Casper, Wyoming until the end of next spring because uh, alternative energy is so awesome, man. It's like saving the planet and we only have to bury like 9 trillion tons of blades just this year in Wyoming. And that's tonight's first boom! Right up your fucking... I didn't say that. Sorry, kids. If climate change is a hoax, <clears throat> why do so many scientists say it's happening? Well, ask Mr. Michael Mann, who's like a millionaire prick, who not only that, he goes to the same college where they rape children. Boys, gay rape. It's even more disturbing than you could imagine. Climate change. Prehistoric babies drank animal milk from bottles. Evidence suggesting that archaeologists have unearthed time immemorial. That babies have been drinking bottled milk since forever. And the current data suggests 7,000 years or more. Al Gore's a whore. Isn't that amazing? I had to say that. That's why. The astronaut photo of her friend's launch into space is either an absolute fake or absolutely amazing. Look at this shit. I think I need more mushrooms. Well, we all need more mushrooms. Moving into the grand solar minimum, we should learn how to wild harvest wild mushrooms, grow our own psychedelic mushrooms for the healing of others, and also grow more mushrooms because they will provide us what the sun will not when it is... If a large volcano goes off and it's dark, we need vitamin D, man. And plus, can you imagine how fun it will be? If that's what it... Anyway, I'm actually going to interview the only presidential candidate that matters. Adam Kokesh. Live, here, for you guys. Finally, free America. And I hate politics, but as a libertarian candidate, Adam Kokesh who can make, he whatever, he's going to make sense. The last time I hung out with Adam, he was being arrested by federal marshals in Independence Mall. They were jumping on him. We were at this marijuana thing. Anyway, his platform is awesome. Check it out. Links will be below. The only candidate that you should actually vote for. The platform is simple. When elected, he will swear in walk into the White House, and sign one executive order. This order will lay out the process for dissolving the federal government in a peaceful, orderly manner. With it, he will resign as president and become custodian of the federal government, and then he will continue to dismantle every single facet of the government until it no longer exists. Yes! I'd vote for him. Hope you got something out of the video. Adam Kokesh, live. Are you planting a seed if you live in the Southern Hemisphere? Have you harvested? Are you seed saving? Did you see the videos that Leah and I did today? Keep calm. More info coming. We love you. Thanks to all of our one-time donors, our new Patreons. And soon, oh my God, you got to see the harvest here. It's amazing. Thank you to all the people that sent us hybrid cannabis seeds from around the world. We did good, folks. 
we did.